to, after about 200 faculty, right before the Christmas or the holiday break, winter break, um, uh, received notices of layoff. And there was no rhyme or reason to it. The university just wanted to cut money, and they all got pink slipped. And maybe Barbara remembers a little bit more about that. But. I, I just got here, like 10 days after the union was, in, was voted in. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so um, we have a long history, and if you look at our contract book, it's really thick. And the reason why it's really thick is because we've negotiated for so many years, and it's, it's called a mature contract. Um, later, in 1997, we affiliate, jointly affiliated with the American Federation of Teachers. And what that did, now the AAUP is what they call an independent union. It doesn't, it's not affiliated with the AFL-CIO. It's considered like a professional organization that has a branch that does collective bargaining. When we affiliated with the AFT, they are part of this umbrella organization called the AFL-CIO, and that's where a lot of unions fall into that umbrella. So, for instance, when we negotiated after 1997 and we had to go on strike, the truck drivers and the construction workers refused to build, refused to cross our picket line and would not work on the law school. And the people refused to deliver things to the university and respecting our strike. And that really was an advantage at the bargaining table. The AFT and the AFL-CIO are also very politically active in state politics. So now we have more of a voice. We basically get a big say on who gets nominated for this, in the Democratic Party um, for our Board of Governors. So it was a real advantage. And soon after, we got what we call the fair share agreement. It used to be that you didn't have to pay dues if you didn't want to, which means meant we were broke. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money. And the woman who has preceded me, Jan Thompson, if you didn't want to use a fax, fax machine at the union office, you would charge. So, she, so that's a little bit about our origins. Our purpose, <clears throat> and this is for any union, legally our purpose is around wages, hours, working conditions. If we bring up a complaint about your, somebody's has to teach a class or uh, they don't want to teach or something like that, we can't, they don't even have to meet with us. It has to be rooted in wages, hours, and working conditions by law. And the law also gives us the right to organize together as a group. Um, to build, that's where our, a lot of our strength can come from, and work together in concert. So our purpose is to um, look out for interests of faculty and academic staff, particularly around wages, hours, and working conditions. Although if we organize, we can figure out a way to have a voice on other issues um, as well. And so, and also, if there's a violation of our uh, agreement, and we sit down with the administration, two equal parties to negotiate an agreement. If the administration violates that agreement, then we can file a, a grievance. We can file it for a group, or we can file it, um, which we just did in the School of Medicine, for instance, where they announced they want to try to lay off 42 tenured faculty, or not lay off, uh, de tenure them, uh, dismiss them. So we filed a group grievance. Or if you have a particular problem, we can file a grievance on your behalf if it's in violation of the contract, the agreement, or law. Okay, so that's a lot. We spent a lot of time doing that. And uh, we also are working a lot in more recent years, and now with Mark Dilley, on trying to organize people to, in their workplace. And basically that means, um, for instance, in pharmacy, He's been meeting with groups of people who are coming together as a group and now asking to the new dean, saying, we as the union of pharmacy want to meet with you and get to know you and have a dialogue. That's a union activity, even though it's not a grievance, even though it's not negotiations. So we're really trying to stretch our muscles with, um, with, org with the power of organizing and being seen. And you know, the whole idea is looking out for each other, which is like this group, right? We have this group, and the union founded this group, and maybe I'm stepping on Sarah, I'm sorry. But to look out for each other, so to know that you're not alone, that there's other people, and we have common interests. The composition, where our uh, bargaining unit is about 2,000 members, mostly faculty, and a variety of faculty. We have the assistant associate, full professors, lecturers, clinicians, and, and instructors, and that's about over 1,500 people. A lot of them are in the medical school, but not. But a lot of them are also on main campus, um, and. You have to work 50% time or more. And then we have what we call academic staff, although you know if you go to another university say academic staff, it could mean something completely different. We define it in our contract. So it's the ASOs, advisors, counselors, librarians, extension program coordinators, um, 
uh, financial aid officers, huh? athletic coaches, athletic coaches, not the division, right. not like the football team. Right. So, so we have a, a broad group of people um, in academic staff. <clears throat> and how you can get involved? One of the things, um, and I'm not stepping on Cheryl's toes. So you can run for office for the ASSC. You can work on. Uh, we need. Uh, we are uh, actively looking for people to be involved in the political action committee, which is really critical right now, given the times we're in. Um, you can run as. A, you can be a council rep, or support your council rep if you don't have one. If you have one, um, you can work with Mark and going round it. He's meeting. He's trying to contact every single member of our union and talk to them and find out what their concerns are and figure out ways to get them involved with the union. You can go with him. He's a lot of fun to hang out with, too. Um, you could run for the executive board. The executive board is the body that's elected, and also there's some folks appointed, like the contract uh, implementation officers and the grievance officers are appointed by the president who's elected. They all make up, and, and uh, Michael, who does our media stuff, are all part of the executive board, and they make decisions about how we spend our money, what we should focus on, that kind of what cases should go to arbitration, um, and make decisions on behalf of the membership. Um, what else do we have? We are working on developing more ad hoc committees. Like for instance, right now, uh, next Monday, we have a committee at three, a meeting at three o'clock on gender equity. We're working with the, co um, the commission on the status of women and another group that works on uh, equity issues for women in science and medicine. So we're working together to explore what we can do about equity. Um, and we're starting with gender, but it doesn't mean just gender. Um, so anybody, it's open to everyone. Um, and you can also work, like I said, to organize your coworkers. I think, is there any questions? Or no, questions will be at the end. Questions will be at the end. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I think everybody knows who I am. I'm Cheryl White, the chair of the ASSC. So as uh, Michelle touched upon a couple of points already, but just to expand, you will not find information on the ASSC in the contract. That is because the ASSC was not a negotiation piece between the union and the university. The ASSC came about as a result of a way to promote the interest, as the first bullet uh, says, to in order to get, provide information and support the interests of the academic staff. Now, I do not know, unfortunately, how long ago it was, but I can just tell you, I know it's at least 15 years because I've been here that long. So I'm sure it's more like 20 or 25. So, of course, we put on functions like this, Generally, we have a, a information luncheon every month between September and April. We don't have a function in the summer war months just because a lot of people, excuse me, are not here. Uh, last month, we actually had a workshop on the professional record. Uh, some of you attended, and uh, we got very good feedback on that. Now, the composition of the Academic Staff Steering Committee, I noticed that members is in bold. You are automatically a member of the ASSC if you are a full member of the union. So if you are here and you are not a member of the union, we strongly encourage you to become a member, and Mark may touch upon that a little later. Now our leadership is comprised of a, a chair, co-chair, secretary, and two members at large. Now. When the co-chair is in place, that person automatically becomes the chair the following year. So this year, Marianka Holloway is our co-chair, so she will be your chair next year. <laughs> and we'll be introducing the members of the committee at a later point in the uh, presentation. But in your information package, which you picked up today, is the nomination form. So any of you are interested in running for the co-chair, the secretary, or either other members at large position, keep in mind you do not have to have ESS yet or be promoted yet. You are, If you are a dues-paying member of the union, you are eligible to apply. Okay. 
So I strongly encourage you, especially if you're newer, to run for one of the offices, especially for the members at large, because that way you'll get an up close and personal peek at how the union is run. So perhaps maybe one day, you know, you'll serve on the ASSC, and then you may be interested in running for a position on the executive board. Okay? So now I'll turn it over to the next presenter. Good afternoon, and I'm Cheryl Dove, and I'm representing ASPDC, and our organization is an outgrowth of a contractual agreement with the union and the administration here at Wayne State University. The Academic Staff Professional Development Committee provides opportunities for staff, and we have approximately 300-ish, between 3 and 350 staff members, as it was previously said, in various ca uh, classifications. Our funding, we are awarded funding each year to provide special events for you um, to be engaged in professional development activities. I'll mention in just a few, few minutes, uh, one of the activities will be your travel grant options. Um, our members, how do you become a member of ASPDC? Uh, once a year, that information is sent to you or it was offered to you from your deans, etc. If you are interested in participating on a university committee. And you would self-nominate or your deans or director would nominate you. And that information is sent forth to um, the selection committee. The academic staff policy committee along... I'm sorry, academic senate, senate uh, sent it. Policy committee selects the candidates. So to volunteer on the committee or to how to become a member, you first have to put your name in the pool, and then that is sent over to the Senate policy and along with the administration will identify a representative from all the various school colleges, etc., to be on the committee. It is a very small committee. It's approximately six members on a committee, and if you want any additional detail about who the members are, etc., you can find that at aspdc.wayne.edu. That information will be there. We provide an opportunity of travel grants. Our funding is to sponsor you in any professional development activity that you want to participate in. Generally, that's an opportunity to attend a conference or a workshop where there is a fee. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Um, there's, uh, so, if any of you are traveling or want to participate in some type of in-state or out-of-state conference that's part of your professional development, you may submit an uh, application for a grant consideration. As staff members, all staff members are considered. You are eligible to apply, and you may receive up to, but not to exceed, $800 a year. Does that mean every staff person will get $800? We award our travel grants based on the funding that we have and how many applicants have applied. So I do want to encourage you, especially the, the junior staff that is new, if you have an opportunity, that funding helps support you to go, which takes the burden off of the departments. Most times the departments say, we broke, we don't have any money, and therefore you can't. Well, you can actually plan your conference opportunity by knowing that you can apply for a travel grant. In most cases, some portion of the $800 you can be awarded that to help defray the cost of that experience. We also sponsor events, and we have. We, our most recent event that we just uh, co-sponsored was a diversity speaker. We had a diversity speaker we co-sponsored with Social Work, Department School of Social Work, and we had a diversity speaker here, and uh, that speaker was an opportunity for us to have professional development brought on campus that co-sponsored. We co-sponsored with Social Work to have a professional opportunity on campus because everyone is not eligible to tra uh, travel. So with that being said, I'd like to encourage you, if there's any topics or speakers that can help um, bring professional development to our campus, please let us know. We will research it because we are aware everyone is not able to travel, but we would like to bring someone here, and that's one of the tasks that we have here. 
Other events, we have an event coming up. The award ceremony is coming up where we recognize um, staff for professional uh, distinguished service and professional achievement and also a co contributing one. Our junior staff members are those who are, uh, have less than seven years or maybe it's five years and have excelled very well. So when we <coughs> pass out those emails that you've been receiving, nominate, 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 self-nominate, et cetera, that's where it goes. We do recognize our staff and give them some acknowledgement in a form of professional uh, achievement and uh, distinguished service. That will be coming up. You'll get, uh, well, actually, it's next week. Uh, but there are other events that we sponsor. So I just want to share with you that the Academic Staff Professional Development is here for you. We provide professional development opportunities for you. We provide travel grants opportunities for you. And we also host and sponsor several events on campus to allow you an opportunity to, par to participate. If you are a member of the committee, we have members and we have volunteers. And generally to become a member, I've already stated how to do that, but it's a very small committee and it's a working committee. So generally we look for a lot of ideals, we brainstorm. So while you are in the roles that you're in and you may attend a conference, send forth that information to the committee so they can evaluate it, consider it, and maybe bring that kind of conference to campus for you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Nada Simon. I work in the provost's office. I'm an extension program coordinator and just finishing my fourth year as chair of the academic staff mentoring committee. This committee came about as a result of the contract, the one that was passed that goes through March of 2021. The faculty felt they needed more mentoring and our bargaining team said, what about the backbone of the union, the academic staff? We were very lucky that the provost, Margaret Winters, believed that academic staff should be mentored so that she put aside money so that we could have events and we could pay mentors by giving them an additional $200 to travel. So if you apply for your 800 you can apply to the Academic Staff Mentoring Committee for two more. That's a thousand, and that goes a long way because departments are saying to academic staff, we don't have the money. They're saying it to faculty too, so we're not the redheaded stepchildren here. <laughs> who are we? We take our members who are on the so called steering committee from four organizations Commission on the Status of Women the ASPDC, the ASSC, and the AAUPAFT. These organizations send to this committee two people, or up to two people. Our current committee is Melissa Barton, Kristen Chinnery, Diane Fears. Oh, it's all, it's all on there? Okay. All members are on the group. Okay. <laughs> And we, all right, we elect, we just had our bylaws signed, passed and signed by the provost's office. We sat as a committee, wrote bylaws, and the provost signed them in April. They're supposed to go on a website. I'm not holding my breath, but they'll be on the website. And we have two officers, a chair and a secretary. And they're chosen from the members for a two-year term. And we, we're going to stagger them so that everybody isn't new at once. I was appointed as chair because I don't represent any of the four groups. Yes, I'm a union member, but most of the people are union members. So I was chosen to get it up and running. And now I'm stepping down in August, and Matt Fredericks from the library, from library science program on ASO is going to take over as chair. And what do we do? Our name says it all. We mentor. We mentor junior academic staff or newbies with older seasoned academic staff. We initially we ran what we called speed dating events because we were new. Nobody had a mentor or a mentee. 
we put them together, we pair them. Some work well, like a marriage. Some didn't work well, so well, like a former marriage. <laughs> With the newer people who got hired, since there weren't that many of them, I get a, something from Tammy every month who's new to the university. And we hook you up. We ask the seasoned staff to volunteer as mentors. We ask the mentees to say, hey, I'd like some help. I need to know how to negotiate Wayne's world. And I personally have four mentors, mentees, and some of them are here. Um, we meet or contact each other about once a month. You work it out. How, how often do you want to see me? How often do I want to see you? <laughs> that type of negotiation, so to speak. My mentees call me. I've got a problem. One of them called and said, you know, I should have gotten my contract renewal. I didn't get it. I knew the boss. I called the boss and said, she's worried. She said, and he said, no, 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 we want her. I said, tell her. <laughs> you don't get this, your contract renewal. You're thinking, oh, my God, are they going to let me go? That's what I would think. So we make, you know. You work together. We need you to volunteer to be either a mentor or a mentee. Our hope is if you've been mentored, the more seasoned staff, we do tend to leave the university. Okay? We, we hopefully will retire. So we hope that who we mentor will in turn become mentors to other new people. Thank you. Hi, uh, Mark Dilley, the Director of Organizing, new here on October uh, 1st. And uh, Kristen Chinnery, the Chair, uh, couldn't make it today, so I'm going to step in. And uh, I learned a lot of new stuff in putting this together as well. So here we go. The AEUP AFT Local 6075 Council Origin. The, I'm just joking. <laughs> so basically what I learned is that uh, the council for the union has been in the contract for a long time, longer than memory serves. So, uh, but nothing had been really pulled up around it until uh, around 2008 when uh, Jen Weaver, uh, the person that was in my position before me, and Michelle uh, worked together to start um, building the council. Um, and by 2011, there was about a, a core group of 10 people uh, that had been doing it for a couple of years, and they wrote a, a council rep description, and then they had elections and, and elected Kristen uh, chair, which he's held, and then there was a secretary. And so we've been building that on that. So in 2011, we had uh, 10 core people, and now we're up to 35. There's a sheet, uh, I think it's in, is it Salmon, uh, that's got a list of everybody that is in the council. Uh, it's 35 people. Um, and at every, we've been building up the, the, the monthly council um, meetings. Uh, when I when I came in here in, in Oct October, it was about 16 people. Now we're up to 20, 21 people coming each month, and we're continuing to build. We just actually had to move um, uh, rooms from our office uh, boardroom to a computer science uh, conference room because we're getting so big. So that's been really exciting. And so that's sort of the origin of it. The purpose is the, the council pulls together to, to do organizing and outreach uh, into departments. And so basically uh, the idea is that during negotiations we're out talking to people, we're having surveys, we're doing town halls, and we're, we're trying to figure out the issues that are in each work area as well as the issues for the union and trying to figure out what to, to do and how to talk to folks. And so basically that is the purpose of the council, is that organizing engine for the union. And uh, basically, uh, I talked about the composition, it's on there. So we have lots, we have 35 people from a lot of different areas, but we also have a lot of areas that don't have council reps. So if there are people that you know that are in there that would be good, that care about people, that care about um, things that, that should be just, then, then talk to them and have them. Uh, contact Kristen. That's how to get involved is talk to Kristen or any of any of us that are involved in the union. 
you guys too, just uh, talk to people and have them um, have the conversation about what it means. It, it depends on whatever work area you're in, if you're going to have like elections for council reps or if people are going to just uh, appoint each other or, or however it works. It's, it, there's no clear um, like one size fits all. It's, it's however it works in your area. So um, I think that's uh, about it. And uh, thank you. Barbara Jones, the contract implementation officer, and I'm here speaking for the Senate um, as a member of the Senate. And I can't believe we're on time. We've no. never been on time. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, sort of. And, and then I said, you know what? I can do this. I promised our, 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 our chair here. I said, I can do this. I can do this in two minutes. Okay, that was my two minutes. Thank you. <laughs> No, I'd like to tell you about the Senate, which is a little different than any of the other organizations, because everyone on the Senate has to be elected. What the Senate does, um, unlike the union, which works with uh, the, the, the working conditions, the Senate is the conduit for uh, expressing the considered opinions of faculty and academic staff to the administration. Um, every There are... Currently, 84 people on the uh, um, on the Senate, but um, the whole purpose of, of, of the Senate is to give a voice, uh, a structured voice, to shared governance. Um, there's the way the Senate is put together. There, there are six um, members at large who are elected every year. I know you, you see those petitions come out. Uh, the, the results just came out to uh, the uh, of the election. And then um, every um, college school um, has <coughs> representatives, the, the library system, and the division of academic affairs. In the, the schools and colleges, the faculty really, they outnumber uh, uh, those of us who are academic staff, so they're the ones who really dominate in that area. Although it's possible to be elected if you are in, in, in that area kind of situation. Most of the academic staff come from the, um, from the um, uh, Division of Academic Affairs who are, who are on the, the Senate. Um, let me see, what else can I say to you that's very quickly? There's a policy committee, which is the steering committee, uh, and that, um, that committee is chaired by the provost and our president of the Senate. You know, once we get a president, what we do is we never let him or her go. And it's been Lou Romano, uh, ever since our last person, Seymour Wolfson, stayed for over 12 years. Uh, when you get someone good, and um, ever since I've been here, which is well, never mind how long that was, uh, how long it's been, but they've all been very, very good. Um, and they, ha they really express what we want um, as academic staff and faculty to have expressed to the administration, and it makes a difference. I'm not going to get into how much a difference it makes because they're also very transparent, and all minutes, all reports, everything about the Senate is on the Senate website. There is, and so anything you want to do, anything you want to know, go out there and click around. It is there. Um, it, it cleaned up a lot sometimes because people get very expressive, but it's there. Uh, so there are standing committees through which all the work of the Senate is done, and those standing com uh, committees are budget, elections, facility support, uh, and techn technological services, faculty affairs, research, and student affairs. I think the names tell you what the people do, but there's a little blurb out there that tells you exactly what the people on each of those committees um, does performs also. Um, we meet the first Wednesday during of every month during the academic year. No meetings during the the summer months again because people, mainly faculty, aren't around during the, the summer months and. Um, I, I, th I think we've been very productive. The one thing I would say if you're going to be on the Senate is have a handle on what's happening within the, the university. I, I was here for a long time before I decided to, to run to get on the Senate because you really have to have um, an opinion about what's happening, not just in your unit, but throughout the university. 
And, you have, and sometimes it's understanding and being able to express what you what may, may not set well with you personally, but what works for the university. And that's what the Senate is all about, to be able to make certain that the university works together. I've often thought Donald Trump should take blessings from us. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm going to point Cheryl up here to tell me some closing remarks. But just uh, right before we do that, I just wanted to take the opportunity. If you are currently serving on one of these um, opportunities or committees we just mentioned, do you mind standing up for us and stay standing? If you're currently serving. (laughs) If you have served in the past on one of these, can you also stand up? So look around. I just want to give a thank you and a uh, applause for those big communities. Ideas to look around and to get involved. These programs are for us and they're supported uh, for us, but they are made up of us. So there's no reason not to get involved. If you're more considered one of the newbies, that's okay. Um, you know, uh, check out one of these activities, get involved in. If you're one of the more seasoned uh, uh, veterans, then grab an academic advisor that might be new in your department and bring them along. So no reason not to get involved. And I thank you very much for coming and serving. And turn over to Cheryl. <laughs> Okay, now is the time for questions. Any questions? Okay, yes. In the back. And is that Andrew? Yes. Can you see? If one would like a travel grant or support for a conference, how far in advance should they apply for those funds? Okay, for travel grants, um, if there are some deadlines, we like to know as early as possible. People do submit them. Um, six weeks early. We do have that information clearly stated because there's fall and then there's winter and it's also spring, summer. But we, we early, sooner, sooner than later for consideration. So if you know now that you're going to a conference in July, if you know that now, package your information up now and submit it and you'll be considered. And we do uh, accept the information, as you'll see, Travel Concord, you know, that information. It's been an updated process, and it's very easy now. So I do encourage everyone, if you're thinking about traveling or something of that nature, or you just have a question, because some people have to pay out of their pockets because departments don't sponsor them. But when you apply for the travel grant, you'll be reimbursed. Are there other questions? Uh, I just want to draw your attention again to some of the information that was in your packet. The, I don't know what color you call this. I think it's buff. I don't know. But it's the ivory packet. Uh, so this is the nomination form. If you're interested in running for one of the positions on the ASSC, uh, again, that would be for co-chair, secretary, or a member of large. And one thing that I did forget to mention when I was up here doing uh, my little spiel, when you become the chair of the ASSC, you automatically serve for that academic year on the executive board. The executive board is listed on the uh, green paper. So keep that in mind. So if you're going to run for co-chair, remember that in the following year, you're not only the chair of the ASSC, but you will be expected to attend the executive board meetings. Okay? <laughs> and again, if you know some of this, you have to kind of savor over. And if you have any questions about any of these, contact the chairs that are listed for all of these organizations. Another thing which I want to bring to your attention, uh, since this is the last function for the ASSC for this academic year, but the 20s, the, once the uh, members are elected for officers for the 2016-2017 year, that just sounds so bad, like 17. <laughs> uh, but once uh, that committee is elected, the planning committee would like your input, this white piece of paper is a survey, 
and it lists the programs that we have had this year. And we would like your feedback to find out which ones you really, really like and you think should be repeated. And I'm sure this space, if there's something not on here, write down a suggestion, okay? Because Marianka, as I mentioned earlier, she will be the chair for the uh, incoming year. So she would definitely like your input. And one other thing is the evaluation form. Again, that's the yellow sheet. We do take heed, we do, we tally these up, you know, for our summary of the feedback. Any questions on any of these? And I would like to recognize members of our executive board who are here and also members who, especially one person in particular, who is not a member, an elected member of the exec board, but she's like the union office, and that's Tammy Forrest. <laughs> you know, she works on my floor. I've been working closely with her for the last two years. You know, she makes our fancy name tags. You just give her stuff, and she makes it all pretty and puts all this stuff together. So I really just want and to thank And I her up, and I abuse yes, her. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> And also, Charlie Parrish, who's the president of our union. I would have been here earlier, but I had to teach a class. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is faculty. Uh, and then, uh, Mark, I want to bring Mark up. So I just had uh, two things I wanted to say. Uh, one was an announcement. One was, first of all, all of these committees uh, count as service for your professional records. Yes. So that is uh, something to consider as well. And then the announcement is, um, tonight uh, the union has um, uh, supported Progress Michigan, and there's a comedy show. I have four tickets at 7.30 at the Garden Bowl area. If anybody wants to come talk to me afterwards, uh, we can distribute those. Thank you. And also, of course, you see the our union swag that's distributed <laughs> on the table. Uh, we have window cleans and also... The round uh, things are little magnets. And the window cleans, there are two types. Ones that stick on the front and then one with the sticky on the back. So <laughs> both, <laughs> both sides. So this is not a... Also, I'd like to thank Sarah Doyle. Sarah is, again, is one of our members of, at large this year. And she coordinated this event. So I'd like to thank you for a job well done. Any other final questions? And feel free, if you think of something after this, you can always contact. So keep this list, the green sheet, keep it so that you have a reference. So if you have any questions or you want more information, contact, especially I would say, say start with the chair. And, and uh, thank you for coming. And one more thing. Oh, one more thing. Um, this has been another in a series of really strong years for ASSC programming. Um, Cheryl, this is your last official this event. Last You're still last serving last. on the board, so you still have to come to our meetings. So thank you very much. Well, I must say, and I had a good mentor from the previous chair, Monique, uh, served as the chair. I was her co-chair right before me, so I had good a good person to mentor and to shadow. So thank you very much, Carl. Uh, with that, unless there are any other questions, thank you again for coming. I think I have any pizza left.